Talking Business with Beverly. I am your host and business strategist, Beverly Wathauer. And we want to thank you, the viewers, for joining us as we support you in creating the time and, time, time and financial freedom in your business. And so we do this by not only addressing your business needs, but also your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial needs as well. And now join me in welcoming Andrea Thomas to the show. Hello, Andrea. How are you? Good. Thank you. And you guys, when I tell you, Andrea is an amazing e-commerce strategist. And so, Andrea, before we actually dive into like your journey into entrepreneurship, I love to play this game with my guests where I ask them three random questions. Okay. So, Andrea, are you game to play the game? Always, always. Okay. What is a movie that you can watch over and over and over again? Zoolander. <laughs> you know, I'm going to let you have <laughs> I'm not even going to ask her why. And so, Andrea, are you a morning person or a night person? I was a night person, had babies, and it I was a morning person. person. <laughs> <laughs> the kids got you up. All five of them got you yes. up, yes. Yes. And then um, my last question for you, let me see. If, um, hmm, what's your favorite book? Ooh, it all depends. Mm -hmm. it, it shifts. So, <laughs> it shifts depending on the season. Oh, this should said the season. <laughs> yes, it's just the season. So, what's in this current season? What, what, right what's your now, favorite? oh, you know, right now, I think it is oof, Expert Secrets. Russell ah, Brunson. Yeah. Huh, yeah. that's a very interesting read. Yeah. I, yes. I, I read that at the time or two. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrew, let's go ahead and just dive into this conversation. Um, because, you know, being in the e-commerce space, um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different little world out there. So kind of tell us, you know, what exactly is an e-commerce strategist? Yes. So an e-commerce strategist, and how I use e-commerce is I'm talking about physical products, selling them online. And so I come in and I either help you jumpstart your business or I see where you are and help you take it to the next level and exceed your goals. I love it. I love it. And so e-commerce, selling my physical products. Yes. If I need help with that. You're the person to go there to. There you go. Okay. And so what were some of the challenges that you faced uh, when it came to actually starting? Because you were in corporate, yes. in corporate America for how long? A long time. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> that was a long time. Okay. So what were some of those challenges that you faced, you know, kind of shifting from being in corporate into actually being an entrepreneur? You know, I, it was, I had a small transition. Okay. I was about to have my, my first child. So I took some time off from work I took, and I asked for an extended time of six months okay. so I could kind of figure out about how this mom thing was going to work and if I really wanted to go all in or do be a corporate person as well as a mom. Mm -hmm. And so um, I took some time off and then I realized this is too addicting. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot let someone else have mm -hmm. all my little one's first milestones. So made that call, quit the job, and then went into entrepreneurship. And so. It was a mental shift mm -hmm. going from corporate, which is I have a set of tasks to do, versus running a whole business and telling myself what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what did you kind of do to help with those shifts, like those mindset shifts? How did you go from having a structured day to being able to call your own shots, so to speak? It was a lot of freedom involved, a lot of grace, <laughs> and allowing myself to learn on the go. Mm -hmm. so there's, there's no true manual on how to, how to do this. And and that also gives you a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was really in the um, research and development stage okay. of my product. So it was a lot of research time. It was, okay, I need to figure out how this product is going to work. How is it going to be sewn together? Because these hands don't sew. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, Wait a minute. So, so I'm gonna, how am I going to get this out of my head mm -hmm. into real life? Mm -hmm. And so what was that process of you actually doing that? You know, and first of all, what's your product that you have? And then how did you... How did you get this thing into uh, going to the market? Yeah, so my little one was born with, um, what has, came with eczema. Mm -hmm. And so shortly after she was born, she started scratching. And on the market, there were, there were mittens available, but there weren't a lot of options where she would actually stay in the mittens. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, okay, you know what? If I can create a prototype and it works for her, then I know that I can make this accessible to other people. And so that's how the journey began. But then the questions became, okay, how, where do you start? You know, I can, I can visually think about this drawing in my head from my architectural experience, mm -hmm. but when it comes to fabric, I know nothing about fabric. <laughs> when it comes to sewing and cutters and pattern makers and things of that nature, it brought a lot of questions, but I had the time to mm -hmm. go research it all. 
And I love that because for a lot of people that would stop them. They were like, okay, I see that there's a need out there, but I don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. And Andrea's living proof. You don't have to know. So you're not in your at your kitchen table sewing these no. meals. That, that's not what you're doing. <laughs> no. So that hopefully you know causes somebody some relief over there to know that it's people out there that can actually support you in that part. Yes. And so how did you go about kind of finding the people to help you on this journey? Well, you know, this is interesting because when it comes to making products online, um, when it comes to making products in real life, mom and pop shops don't have websites. So you have to actually put foot to the pavement mm -hmm. and go talk to people in person. Okay. And so what I did was I kind of reverse engineered it. I said, okay, I know I need a seamstress. Well, a seamstress should know a pattern maker and someone should know a cutter. And now I can go visit places and decide who's going to work with me, who's, who, who's going to help me take this vision and put it into real life. Mm -hmm. And then there came a time when it was time to scale. So now I'm no longer dealing with domestic factories. I need to actually sh figure out how to shift to international. Oh, wow. So you are international. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and so, Andrew, we are going to continue this conversation right after these messages. Hello, I'm Beverly Wathauer and I'm a business strategist specifically for coaches. And one thing that I want to share with you is just as an entrepreneur, ensure you're very clear on who it is that you want to serve in your business. The clearer you are, the more money you make. I promise you that. So when you're, um, when you're clear and succinct on who it is that you want to serve, then it impacts your messaging, it impacts the product or the service that you put out because you know that you're specifically putting it out for a certain person. So once again, as an entrepreneur, make sure that you're very very clear on who it is that you serve in your business and I promise you the more money you'll make until next time Talking Business with Beverly. I am your host and business strategist, Beverly Walthour. And so we're having a conversation with Andrea Thomas. Andrea is an e-commerce strategist. So she was sharing her journey of how she actually used an issue that was going on with her daughter who was born with eczema and kind of seeing the scratching and she was doing the Houdini moves where she was actually coming out of those little mittens. So she saw a need in the market, you know, based on something that was going on with your family. And then that kind of birthed the, the business that you have um, in e-commerce. And so, you know, you touched a little bit on, you know, going through that process of just knowing that, hey, you know, if you have this idea, there are people actually out there that can support you. Um, what if I'm like, you know what, I don't want to do all that design stuff, you know, and finding the people. What are some other options that I have out there? There, there are so many different product uh, selling models. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you want, if you don't want to carry any inventory, you could do something called drop shipping, mm -hmm. where you will work with different companies and they will ship it on your behalf when someone purchases from your website. Or you can uh, decide you want to do print on demand, which is very similar to drop shipping, except it's your brand, it's your, it's your designs on t-shirts, cups, um, mugs, you name it, basically. Mm -hmm. And then when someone purchases, they will ship on your behalf. And so there's pros and cons to that, That's of course. Right. And, and the, one of the cons is it's more expensive. Uh, because you're not getting the biggest chunk of profit. So your customers won't see a different price difference price wise mm -hmm. um, But you will feel the difference um, on the back end when it comes to keeping yourself in business because It's a pricing strategy involved with that as well. Gotcha. Okay, and so you know We hear your journey of how you went from idea now your product is out there on the market So for you, you know before you walked into this world of entrepreneurship Were there any misconceptions that you had about being an entrepreneur? That it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> when I started Scratch Me Not, I I was so excited about the designing aspect, mm -hmm. about bringing something to life, and then when the product is done, now it's time to actually sell it, and it's time mm -hmm. to put on the business hat and get the marketing and so on. And so I did some things out of order, but I learned a whole lot along the way that I'm able to really help my clients and also continue building Scratch Me Not to where it can take it to new heights as well. Now, you said you learned some things out of order. What, was, yes. what, what happened with that? Go ahead and share some of those challenges with the viewers. The myth of if you build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a big red stamp, I would say myth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and 
you know, some of that is true. People mm -hmm. will stumble upon mm -hmm. your website. People will uh, find out who you are. But we don't want stumbling. We want purpose purposeful, we want to be driven, we want to be a lot of traffic because of conversion rates. And conversion rates are simply where you have 100 people come to your website, but 100 people won't purchase. Uh, three people may purchase. And so now you have a 3% conversion rate. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you're playing with numbers and you're determining, um, you know, if I want to make X amount of money, I need to drive this much traffic, I need to work with my existing customers and create more sales because that's less marketing dollars. And, and the list goes on and on. So I learned all this on the job, <laughs> on the job training plus at a little one. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was a lot of fun, but it was also a thing of how do I manage myself? Mm -hmm. Because I went from corporate to entrepreneur life where you have all this freedom, but you got to move work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, although I mean, I had somebody tell me when to clock in and clock out, it's still a responsibility because it's still, I still have to fulfill orders and people that I still have to respond and answer to. So I yes. love that. Yes. And so for you, you know, you mentioned being able to drive traffic to your, to your business. How do you actually use social media to do that? Oh my goodness. Social media is so powerful. There was a time where it was mostly viewed as talking to my friends or catching up with people. But when you turn on your business eye with social media, you realize that there is a, over a billion, more than a billion people on just one social media platform alone. And so with that, now we're just learning how to communicate with them, talk to them around their pain points so that you can introduce your product as the solution for their concern. And then once they use your product and it's an awesome quality product, they're going to tell others about it, and now you have something that could potentially move into a viral situation where you're going to have sales um, products flying off the shelf simply because of the power of social media. Well, and so do you have clients, or even yourself, have you experienced the issue, you know, you, we mentioned not having enough clients, but then have you had it on the flip side where you have run out of product, and what do you do with that? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And you know, both of them are interesting because if you run out of product, some people panic and they're like, oh no, no, I ran out of product. And this is actually a good thing oh, because okay. it lets you know that you have demand mm -hmm. and you can you can replace that. It is also not a good thing if you're always out of stock because now you're becoming unreliable and people will find another person or another business to fill that void. So how do I keep that balance so that I don't run into Ooh, that secrets. situation? Oh, she said, look, I can't tell you unless you <laughs> No, no, no. It's, it's really, some of it is a gamble, but mm -hmm. some of it is looking at your, your history and projections and so that's why we do our projections to see okay where were we last year where we where do we want to be and how do we make sure we can keep this inventory in stock based on history now if you have no history we want to start off kind of modest depending on if you've done the work of creating a community first now if you have a community that's really engaged with you and is really in tune with you when you introduce the idea of your product and they go crazy you can now have freedom to order order more do pre-orders things of that nature and so for you, do you do you find that even the people that you work with, do they think about all of those things before they go into, into the business? No. <laughs> no, you know, and it really depends on their background. Mm -hmm. So they have a marketing background, they kind of have an idea, but then there's those questions of inventory management, if they care about inventory. Um, but many times people want to focus on one thing, kind of silo it, where I'm going to focus on making my product and designing it because I love doing it. But when you're done, do you have someone to purchase it? Or, <laughs> or, or, you know, they're so focused on, on, on marketing it, they don't have enough inventory to support it. So there's a balance that takes place here. And then as well, um, when you're selling beyond the product and actually building your actual brand. Gotcha, gotcha. And so, Andrea, we are going to continue this conversation right after these messages. and business strategist Beverly Walkhour. And so we're speaking with Andrea Thomas. Andrea is an e-commerce strategist. And so she's kind of been speaking with us about her journey. But Andrea, there's another part to your journey as this entrepreneur. And so you are a wife and mom, correct? Yes. And so how many babies do you have? Five. Five little ones. Yes. And so the question now becomes like, how do you balance the, you know, being the wife, being the mom, running a successful business? Um, I don't know if balance truly exists, <laughs> but I do know you can find your rhythm. 
I like and it. so when we find our rhythm, that's when I'm able to say, okay, because, because babies change. Mm -hmm. And so just when you get used to one stage of life, they shift. And so I have to be able to shift with them so that I can continue building my business as well as being present for them. And so it's really a matter of scheduling and being flexible as well. <laughs> as well as bribery. <laughs> <laughs> Bribe the babies. <laughs> <laughs> bribery. <You> know, <laughs> a little bit of that in there, but, but really letting them know that, you know, mommy has her time when she needs to work. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a no kid time. And then, and I don't get a lot of that. I don't get eight hours of working time. I can get two hours here, two hours there. Um, but along with that, let them know that mommy's checking out of work now. So it's all you. And so they feel that balance as well. So I love that. So being very intentional about your time. Mm -hmm. But then also kind of getting the buy-in from them as well to yes. realize, wow. And so how do you kind of include them in the business? Oh, my goodness. So they are the models. <laughs> they are. They help me with the selection of clothing and coloring. They, they give me their insight, their input on what they don't like, what they do like. And then they were also, they learned how to count by helping me with packing and shipping. Oh, well, hey, all right. <laughs> In the beginning before we shipped it on and we grew, mm -hmm. but they were really hands-on. I wanted them to know that this was an option for them, that they could go to school, they could go work for someone else, or they could work for themselves, and this is kind of how it works for a product-based business. And I love that, you know, giving them that option. So, to let you know that I was listening, so you don't drop ship because you said you have product at the house where they count. So yes. what is it called that you do? Is the so I'm a manufacturer. I'm paying attention. Yeah, you are. You are. Now I don't I don't ship from home anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay. But like in the beginning, mm -hmm. I used to, and mm -hmm. I think it's very good to touch all aspects of your business in the beginning. Okay. So that you know, okay, it's time for me to ship. This is how I want things to flow and to function. But definitely um, making sure that they were involved in that process and. <laughs> but like you said, it was a process, so and you understand that process. So even when you're working with your clients, like right. you can say, I've been there and done that. Yes, yes. So that makes sense. Yes. So now let me ask you this, because I see, you know, being in the online space, I see there are a lot of people that have product-based businesses, and they're like, how do I get more clients? How do I get more clients? So, you know, kind of touch on some of the strategies that you, you know, you can't give away all the secrets, but what are some of the strategies that you use to kind of drive traffic to the various uh, ways that we can actually purchase from you? Well, with, with my product especially, I wanted to, I, I understand my customer. I understand what they need. I understand some of their pain points. And I need to know where they're living online. And so when you know where they live online, you know what, what makes them tick, you know what they're reading, you're able to put your product in front of them and drive them to wherever your community is. So if your community is via email, via a social media group, or wherever, you can corral them in a place where you can carry on a conversation. And when that conversation begins, they'll let you know how to market to them, how to communicate to them, and of course, position, position your product to be sold to them. Okay, so you build, you have a little online community. You have an online community of where yes. you can kind of, and so what do you do to continue to nurture that relationship? Because once again, you know, I purchased this product, I bought it, so how do you continue to get repeat clients? Well, and that's a good, that's a good question because we, my goal is to give them value. Of course, it is to sell the product and stay in business dollar-wise, but I really want to support them on this journey. And so now that I understand my customer's journey, I also understand how to communicate to them, what topics to talk about, what's going to keep them engaged, so that we can continue the conversation. And when they need this product again, they remember us because we say top of mind. Awesome. So, like you said, building that relationship. So it's not just, hey, come buy this and, right. and disappear. And I love it. Not I only love emails of bye, bye, bye. None of that. They're having a conversation. Okay, maybe 19 emails. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> if, if, if they're merged together. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to mm -hmm. helping you purchase and helping you buy. Right. Or know that my product's available for sale. That's, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. But I don't want it to be the only exactly. thing that you expect. Exactly. And that's something that makes you different from some of the other mm -hmm. e-commerce strategists out there. And so, Andrea, believe it or not, we are. So, share with our viewers how they can find you. So, your email, uh, social media, website. Yes. Okay. So, for Scratch Me Not, of course, it is scratchmenot.com. Um, to connect with me, it is info at andreathomascollective.com. And, of course, to work with me, it is um, mypathtoprofit.com. I love that.
love it. So, Andrea, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been amazing just to hear about your journey, you know, uh, in this e-commerce world, world. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate oh. it. And thank you, the viewers, as well, for joining us. And just remember, as entrepreneurs, you want to ensure that not only do you take care of your business needs, but also your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial needs as well. Until next time. Thank you.